it's a beautiful day here today. Look at this beautiful morning. I've got up really early because I've come up to the allotment. I've got lots and lots to do today. We're going to plant all this lot today, a mixture of courgettes and winter squash. We've got some lovely corn, sweet corn to go in, and some French beans, and then some peas and things in the back here. Uh, and apart from that, we've also got to dig up all the garlic. It's got a bit of rust on this year, which is annoying, but I dug a few last night and the bulbs are really good. So we're going to go and dig the garlic, pick some peas, harvest some greens, and then strim the allotment. So really busy morning. Hope you can join me. Let's head over there now. Look at all of those like, beauties. So you've got to get these in the ground as soon as possible. All right, close that one. Oh, this one's a bit heavier. <laughs> this one's all the uh, corn, and beans, and a few more peas. All right. Yeah, I've left, the, left these peas a bit late. They're flowery. I've even got peas on them, and they're still in the modules, and some more corn. Oh, it's all looking lovely here today. Wow. Just look at those. Look at them. <laughs> right, there we are. I'll prop the door open. Yeah, we've got quite a, quite a bit of rubbish in here. But last night I wanted to show you before, before I started anything, I came up and uh, I just wanted to check the garlic because because it's got quite bad rust this year. Anyway, look at these. <laughs> look at that. Absolutely amazing. I think they're the best garlic I've ever grown. It's really, really big. Yeah, so I picked about 10 of them last night. Some really good ones. Some slightly smaller. I did show you the biggest one there. That's the tiniest. But yeah, out of these 10, I've got about 100 to harvest. So really really happy with these so far it's fingers crossed they're all the same so i'll put these back in here i need to actually um get them out of the shed and put them out here somewhere to dry out so i think i'll, I'll just put them down here actually got myself a little fork so let's lift these so i'm just going to shake the soil off a bit, not remove the roots or anything, just lay them on the ground just to dry out. This looks like a big one, what do you think? <laughs> Look at that. Look at that, isn't it gorgeous? It's enormous. <laughs> Look at these, <laughs> look at that. So that's two, two beds, I've got two more beds to go. So, all right, let's just go and lay these out and then uh, the camera picks them up. Lay these out and then, um, yeah, hopefully they'll dry out and then we can plant some sweet corn in their place. This is this year's white Casablanca. Not too bad. Not too shabby, <laughs> as they say. Yeah, look at this. Oh, I don't even know if I'm going to be able to get them out of the cells. Look at that, the network of <sighs> roots. And I know that sweet corn don't really like being disturbed. Their roots being disturbed, so. It's all going to be a bit fingers crossed with this lot. Right, hopefully, just finger in the bottom of the uh, in the little tray, pop that in, and out they come. I'm just going to uh, lay these out in a nice block pattern. That's uh, got two beds of sweet corn in. 
Uh, I've kind of rammed them in a bit this year just because I've got so many and not enough space on the allotment. So we're going for rows uh, five by four. So there's 20 plants per little bed. They're really squeezed in, so I'm going to have to keep them fed and watered, I think, this year. But now I'm going to get the rest of these garlic out. Right, let's see how these have done, shall we? Yeah, lift them up gently. Oh yeah, look at that. Completely different. See why they're called pink germidor? The lovely pink sort of skin on there. Lovely. Right, let's just lay these down and then we'll uh, be able to plant the sweet corn. Really, really pleased with the garlic harvest this garlic <laughs> garlic harvest this year. Uh, yeah, look at these these pink germidor. Look at that. It's just it's enormous. I've never grown garlic quite as big. I obviously had uh, some white Casablanca left, so I, some of those are in this bed too. But yeah, I'm really, really pleased this year with the garlic. These are in quite deep root trainers. This is from container wise. Um, if you've ever seen them online, if you just look at them up online, Google them container-wise, and you can buy these really hard, plastic, long-lasting root trainers, all sorts of different sizes. But you'll probably know, but these deep ones are good for uh, corn and beans, peas, that sort of stuff. I like to get their roots down. So... It's just there's holes in the bottom you just use a finger and loosen them up and then you can just lift them out nice and easily so i'm going to get on and plant all of these right that's all the uh Sweet corn in, that's a relief, <laughs> I can tell you. It's uh, good to get stuff out of the garden and out of the pots and into the ground. Anyway, what I want to do now is I want to water them all. Fill them up from the IBC. So you can see on the um, sweet corn that I left all these little divots around them and that's to collect the water when I water them, which you'll see in a minute. Always try and do that just to make sure that the water goes in actually around the roots of the plant to settle them in. So let's go and check the water. Great. All right, let's go and water these. I've got to um, plant out all these squash and courgettes now. So I'll take you over there. We'll work out where we're going to put them. All the courgettes are going to go down here, as we said. Got some beautiful plants, some of them here, just so healthy looking. you saw. I've just got to come and puddle them all in, water them all in, but that should be good. 11 courgettes. <laughs> I know, it's mad isn't it? Anyway, now I'm going to get on and plant these winter squash and the pumpkins. I think these will probably need these sort of bamboo canes. If you um, put them either side of the plant, it just helps support them, get them in uh, when it's really windy. And uh, we do have a lot of wind up here in the allotment, which is why I keep all these sort of half bits and bobs of canes. Just poke them in and it just helps stabilise the plant. Not always pretty, but just still there, settled in anyway. 
and that stops all this rocking about, you see. Right, let's put the label in. These are scarlet uh, runner beans, which I sowed a while back. So I've got seven of them to go in. Got some nice sort of roots on them. Looking good. So all I'm doing is sticking a little hole on the inside of the cane, pop them in, and then firming around. And, and then as they grow, I'll direct them towards the cane if they don't do it themselves. Right, so that's seven. I've put a post up the middle just to help uh, secure it as well. So I'm hoping that does the job. Right, we're back. And uh, the eagle eyed amongst you might notice there's a slight change in light direction. Uh, obviously this morning we did as much as we could and then I had to go in for lunch and I've come back, I've strimmed the grass and everything's looking, I think, as good as it can do. Uh, it's been a good day, really enjoyed today. But now it's time to go and harvest what we can. Obviously this morning I got all the garlic and I've taken them home so I can't show you. Um, so yeah, I think I must have had about 100, 120 garlic out of those four beds, which is really good. And you know, they really are the best garlic I've been lucky enough to ever grow really. And I think it's all down to the seaweed, cow manure and compost. It really does make a difference. I mean, before I planted them, I think I put a bit of blood fish and bone in and some chicken manure pellets to kind of help and keep the ground a bit fertile. But uh, yeah, really, really pleased, especially the pink germidor. They were, they were just amazing. Some of them are like, are like this, you know, cloves are going to be enormous. And the white, the white Casablanca did really well too. So really, really pleased with those this year. Should we go and have a quick look around? Oh, we did earlier, didn't we? But I've tidied up a bit since then. <laughs> cut the grass. Yeah, all the grass is all cut, looking lovely. Damson's looking good. Uh, the plum is looking really healthy. I didn't expect them to come on quite this much, but they have. I think it, maybe it was the mycorrhizal fungi that I put in around the roots when we planted it, but they're looking really healthy. And the pear tree as well. No fruit this year, so hopefully next year. So yeah, this is the bed I didn't show you this morning. These are the amazing pink. Look at that pink. These are the absolutely amazing tree spinach. And I've been picking it, taking the central stem out, if you can see in there, perhaps not. But then it's shot up all from all these sprouted from all the side shoots. So these are good. Those I haven't tipped out yet, which I'll do in a minute, take them home for tea. And then in here, we've got a lot of turnips, which are doing really well. These are multi-sown, you can see in there, maybe. Yeah, there we go. Let's see, sort of purple top. I've got them elsewhere on the allotment too, but these are really doing well. These are Armand, I think. Yeah, turnip Armand, sown on the 6th of March. And then we've got the spinach. This is the ever, everlasting spinach. This is just wonderful. Absolutely love this stuff. Notice this one was going to flower though, so I've nipped the tip out of that. This is what I did with them last year when they started doing this on the other allotment. I take these flowering stems right out to the base, eat the leaves um, because they don't go bitter and then it'll keep them going throughout the summer. That's what they did at home anyway. Then we've got some chard. It's lovely Swiss chard with these beautiful white stems. Getting a bit nibbled that one. And we've got some rainbow chard in there as well if you can see this beautiful colours, pinks. And then here we've got some beetroot, again, multi-sown, and they're a lot smaller at the moment. These were chioga, they were sown, uh, oh, I didn't put a date on it, that's unusual. Anyway, yeah, these are chioga, so they're to come. And then I think these last ones, a yellow stem, they're F1 Boldor. Oh, that's a useless label, isn't it? Yeah, they're just coming in there, can you see? That golf ball, just bigger than a golf ball. Let's grab the basket and we'll go on a little walk up the allotment. And I think we'll pick some peas because there's not much else that's ready up there. We've got the garlic. Oh, we could get some celery, couldn't we? This is all beginning to go to flower. So what I'm doing is getting a penknife and taking the whole 
whole plant. What I'm doing is taking a whole lot down here. Right, I'm going to take them and I'll cut another one. Really good in juices and things. The celery. And maybe this one. So what I ideally want to do is get this bed back into production for something else. Got some celery. Uh, these are some turnips I picked this morning. I've got a few more to pick now. So let's go over here. Now, these multi-sown turnips have done really well, I think, as I said earlier. And some of them are quite big. Now, yeah, here's one. If we just gently twist this out, try and leave the other one in there. Oh, there we go. Look at that beauty. Absolutely perfect. Put that in the basket. I think round here there might be a couple more biggies. Here's a good one. Yeah, look at that beauty. Absolutely perfect. Gorgeous, gorgeous colouring on it too. So that's a lovely one. Put that in the basket. And I think I spied one other around here somewhere. Oh, here we go. It's beginning to split. So I thought we'd better have this one out. Yeah, look at that. Oh, looks lovely. There you go, there's the Instagram picture. <laughs> and there's the reality. But anyway, you'll be fine. Put that in the basket. Right, now we want some peas. Now, because I was so hungry earlier, I'd pick some of these. <laughs> so there might not be so many. Just before I went off to lunch. So you usually find the ones down the bottom of the ones which have ripened first. There you go, there's four lovelies. I'll see if I can, see if I can find some more. And this one. Hello. You can tell if peas are ripe um, or full in the pod by rattling them. You just use your fingers and give them a little tap. If they rattle, they're not ready yet. If they feel solid, then they are. Hello. And hear them rattle. Not ready if they rattle. Solid. Look at that, that's a monster. Oh, not rattling either. Well, that's ready. Look at that, beauty. Right, I might have to eat that in a minute. <laughs> Don't take much to go from being rattly to being ready and then going over. Right, let's put these in the basket. Hear the squeak. <laughs> Great noise, isn't it? In the basket with these. It's all looking good. Right, let's see if we can get some rainbow chard. These stems are just extraordinary colours. Yeah, look. Gorgeous sort of colours, like a stick of rock colour. Another one of them. Pretty healthy looking leaf. Those colours. Right, let's get some Swiss chard. This is a white stem. But again, that leaf is enormous. <laughs> see what else we can find. What I try and do is pick the biggest so the plant is constantly sending up new leaves. Not bad, aren't they? Gorgeous. Right, I thought what we'd come and do is take the tips out of some of this tree spinach. Make it bush more because it's the young shoots which are the tasty, tasty shoots. So I'll just take a nice top out. And this will encourage it to send out more and more side shoots, which they are, they are doing actually. But yeah, look at this. Gorgeous. I think that's probably all we've got room for. So got some tree spinach, celery, peas, 
some turnips, Arman turnips, and then a mixture of rainbow chard, Swiss chard, and everlasting spinach. All this abundance of food, just amazing. And here's that enormous pea pod. Should we open it? Look at that. You see them? Don't know how well that picks up. They're absolutely perfect. Like I said right at the beginning of the video, I think I said, these are the sweetest things you'll ever eat off the allotment. They're just amazing. Apart from tomatoes, maybe. But yeah, fresh, green, sweet, absolutely heaven. Amazing. I remember actually, when I was a kid, my best friend and I, we used to live out on uh, near some woods and there were lots of fields around where we grew up. And I remember one day coming across this field of peas. <laughs> and you know, kids are kids, we obviously went in and helped ourselves, but there were just peas as far as the eye could see. And when you're about sort of 12, 13, it's like, wow, this is amazing. So here we are, perhaps that's why I'm growing peas these days, but look at these lovely turnips, all this fresh vegetables for food. You can use it in cooking, in salads juices, everything. Uh, why wouldn't you grow your own, eh? So please, as always, if you like this, if there's anything you gain from it, please like, subscribe and hit the bell button, which is down there somewhere. It would really be appreciated. It's, uh, I do appreciate everybody who follows. It's just uh, amazing to think that we're all sharing in this um, joy of growing our own food and produce. And you know, you might be in Australia, Singapore, America, it's all around the world and we're all joining in, doing the same thing, sort of joins us all together as a human race and a species. Okay, see you soon, see you in the next one. Oh, which may be, will be probably back at home. I've got the dahlias to plant out. So yeah, I've got the whole bottom end of the garden to have a look at. So hopefully I'll see you in that one. Okay, bye for now.